what's up guys poe2 came out today but i had things to do so i'm streaming now poe2 came out at one in the afternoon i saw all day there was a lot of issues people weren't even able to play but then i went to sleep at like five or six so it's like i could have probably played when they fixed everything criminals your sentence is to be hanged from the neck until death. Let your souls feed the first ones, and your bodies feed the land. My uh, plan was, because, you know, I want to get back into streaming, like, often, is to probably stream the monk and the warrior at whatever rate I want, like, in the same stream for the first playthrough of one of the characters and then do like a YouTube playthrough for the new game plus. Like right now I'd pick Monk and I'd play for however long. Did they change the warrior? He has like a bunch of cuts on him or scars or something. He has a tank. He does be taking damage. Basically I'm going to switch between the warrior and the monk as frequently as I feel like it using the stash. So like my streams are just me playing the warrior and the monk. One or the other. Like... I'll switch whenever I want. Pagan! You failed to liberate your brothers, just as you have failed in poisoning my subjects against me. Call out to your dreamer. Let us see if he answers. Okay, so I have standard, hardcore, hardcore SSF. I don't even know what that is. I'm guessing hardcore is like... Okay, solo self-found must be like no online. Hardcore must be like one life, so we're just gonna do standard, of course. Okay, and it's online, so you have to have different names. There's a lot of lore in the initial opening of the character selection. You see the executioner, you saw a monster in a cage. Um, none of this information really is given to you. There was you know, a stream that gave the information, but you wouldn't really know otherwise. We were sentenced to death, you know. Out of all the characters, one we pick doesn't die, which is very gruesome. Um, this game introduces you know, for RPGs a new style of movement. W A S T and mouse. We're gonna go with the mouse, a more classic feel. By the dreamer's will, I have another chance. By the first one, you're alive. I'm glad to see another living soul. Now, oh, all those who drowned in the flooding, suddenly they ain't so dead no more. I would appreciate it if you could. This lore is crinkled in. I'll probably try to pick up on it and explain it. But there was a monster in a cage, brought school for spreading all the corruption. I will see about this mill. Um, the count, or whatever, he released it. In this area now, there's like you know undead monsters and we're basically gonna try to defeat that monster in that cage that you saw if you oh my game crashed i mean that's probably completely normal at this point and uh you know just day one you know the crash cool But there's information I can't disclose as to why I have certain preferences, like my keyboard or the uh, WASD. But just know that I'm not doing it because I I'm new and I need someone to explain what I should explore, right? Like WASD is better for casters, but if you play melee. You're really going to want the precision of this. Like, you're going to want to click 
No CG shifts to stop moving in perfect. They're gonna wanna do that to the stuff. Now that I'm here streaming it, that was all the hype. Am I personally really that excited? Am I like really like okay, it's time to play? Like fantasy wise, yes, like I'm ready to get great gear, I'm ready to hunt, I'm ready to fight bosses. But like energy wise, this game is very to me heavy. It's like a cascading dark energy, but it's not like negative, it's just like heavy. And I'm really not ready to deal with it and, and mess around with it for like months at a time. You know, if you're like it with WASD. It just it just involves too much it, it does too much canceling for melee, right? Like if I'm moving around using WASD, like I can kind of show you. Like I'm moving around like this. For melee, you can see how it's kind of jerky. Like let's say I want to move up to this bridge and punch the first plank. Like it's just me like doing my regular WASD style, like I'm dodging and stuttering and like kind of like strafing, right? So it takes me it takes me eight hours to get to the to the board. No, I'm not even like exaggerating. But then when I do get to the board, do I have to hit shift? You know, I have to shift WSD. So just kind of like there's, there's a there's a stutter. But then if I just use mouse and keyboard, this is like a melee where I can click right up to there. Now you you don't even stutter, right? Like with WSD, you have that you have a stutter. For melee, it has it, it causes a lot of canceling. It makes you cancel attacks, it makes you stay out of range. So, WASD isn't really the thing for melee. Keeping it classic and counting on the developers to make melee much better in this game is what we should be doing. Right? So, like I said, I'm only going to play the warrior and the monk. I really would just be shredding everything that isn't for them. Unless it's like, like a, a legendary item that's for like a mage or something, then I'll probably keep it. Otherwise, I'm going to shred everything else for currency. Everything's dependent. Everything's going to build monk and warrior back to back for these first playthroughs. Monk is dexterity and intelligence, so we're gonna get we're getting a lot of energy shield. Power. But at what cost? Get Fallen Thunder. Let's say uh monk's skills, you know, there's a lot of movement involved. Lightning skill. It's Fallen Thunder, you can kind of assume what it is. It's like a lightning overhead strike. So look. There's a lot of movement. Okay. Effective. So look, I can, let's say I want to attack this water, or let's say I want to attack this, this tree standing up here using the mouse and keyboard. I just click to it. Oh. But like, if I use WASD, I'm just trying to show you why I think mouse and keyboard's superior to, see, like, you have, you're trying to aim, you're trying to move, right? This is why it's better for casters. Like, you can see moving, my head switching, that's casting. This is not, this is not a melee, WASD is not a melee thing. I go here, look. I basically missed the tree. Alright, I missed the tree. Mouse and keyboard. I just click to the target. Boom. It's just it's better for melee. People a lot of people are gonna spend their, their whole the whole time playing this game, WASD, and never use mouse and keyboard for melee, and it's gonna be like just gonna be jittery. It's gonna be jerky. It's gonna be inaccurate. Staff strike, my basic attack's gonna come in. Like, that's gonna be a, a very different thing. Like, it isn't like other games where you just drop your basic attack, you just use skills, spells. We'll call them skills.
but build wise, I'm not some build guru. This is the skill tree, but we all can we all can just safely assume that I'm not going to be building minions after percent attack cast speed, right? Or or um like you know like I'm not I'm not that I'm not that wacky where I build minions a monk. I'm not looking for some like tipped tilt it build that makes you excel in one area to some crazy extent and triggers other effects like I'm just trying to build a monk that I want to play. So here's the first boss, Lord of Miller. I think that's the rest of the game probably is the boss fights. You got a stagger off by him. I think melee you would have more staggers off. They turn this game from like a five class system to a two class system where you have two class and then you have charms. Which I think kind of invalidated a lot of what made the class great. A very simple first boss charm. You know, red indicator for a big slam. It's gonna get a lot worse than that, buddy. So like I said, taking these quiver staff, this isn't for the warrior, the monk, we're just gonna trash it. We got this belt. Life recovery from flasks, we'll take the belt. It opens a charm slot. So this is like instead of having five flasks, you have two flasks, mana, or health, mana, and then three charm slots. Which the charms are pretty cool, but they act as more of like special flask wood. Like, you know, uh L3 distance and stuff. But I'm pretty sure like this whole week or a couple weeks playing through the, the first three acts of the campaign that are currently available. How have the Esmites fallen thus far? Okay, well now there's some issues. There's a lot of people here. Friendly's the name. It's almost over well that we can't take in the actual the story. Here. If what you did out there in the riverbanks is any sign. Another refugee from the Counts of Justice, I take it. Well, have no fear. This place is something of a hideaway for many of us now, and we could sorely use your skills in these dark times. I'll smith for you what I can, if you're willing to bend your violence toward our defense. He's a skill gem. Dark, you could channel your violence against this devourer, as Finn calls it. There's a little bit of uh, exhibition. Um, they want me to go fight the devourer. I could actually ask him again about There's it. There's a beast of particular dark power stalking us out in the valley. It moves unseen under the dirt and attacks without warning. We can't leave the walls to find food, and I've been unable to corner and slay the beast myself. Now if you could so he just wants us to go and fight this beast that dwells underground. Now here, you can sell items or you can um, break them down. The smart thing to do you break down a blue, you get a blue. If you find yeah, wait. Right I'll wait. Welcome that. to the camp of the lost. I am Una. This may sound strange, but I recently had a dream about a pagan arriving here. Perhaps you are here for a reason. All this began the night Count Ginor took his most loyal men into the Grillwood. After he returned, a madness grew in him. Something happened out there. Please, I beg of you, travel into the forest and begin your search. There must be some clue as to what took place. I fear this land's sickness will only deepen unless we do something. These are just some Looks like you can sell. And then you have disenchant. For um, you know, the ability to gain shards. Like I said, this bow's worth 41 gold. This staff's worth 14 gold. So it's better to 
you know, take it slow, disenchant the staff, and sell the quiver. Oh, I like this one. Because we need lots of cash, and we do need lots of shards. But, like, let's be reasonable here. This, this woman, she's, like, magical. She sells, like, staffs and stuff. And this guy's, like, I friendly. He sells, if you find a anything, take your like, staffs and other things. Right now I can take 50 gold and buy this chess piece, but it's so early I could probably come up, come across something like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be fine. Let's take this skill gem, and uh, we have three choices, level one skills, level one skill gem, one to one, we get to a level three, we have one to one, or you can upgrade these to a level three skill, so still beat these type of skills. Killing palm. Glacial Cascade, Frozen Locust. This isn't a tutorial or nothing, so I'm just going to be doing With killing what I be doing. Monsters will display these blue indicators when they are low on life. Use Killing Palm to dash to these monsters and cull them for an instant kill. This will grant you a power charge. Other skills like Falling Thunder will spend power charges to greatly enhance their effects. So you can see just from the, that little tutorial or that little like excerpt. Killing Palm, this kind of a skill that used to kill low, low health enemies, and that's all it does, but it actually gives you a power charge, allowing you to enhance something like Falling Thunder. It makes a big difference. Okay, so let's look at our quests. We have Search for Devourer, you know, or Slay the Devourer, and then this woman gave Sorry, us more lore, like... Elsewhere. You know that the cow went into the woods and found something and that's more of like the main quest kill the devourer is just we need help we're in town and we need help kill the devourer right i'm not going to explain anything to such you know deadly detail or level but um i'm just going to explain probably the gist of it like okay this is not a campaign quest this is just like help us out Here's a little feature I want to show you guys. It's really interesting. I like it. Using the uh, waypoint, you can look at the world map, and it'll show you in the area you're in. You know, the area you're in, or the area you're going to, has skulls and chests. Skulls are bosses. This skull is darkened. We've already fought the Bloated Miller. So, like, this gives you... This is basically, like, did you miss anything, right? So, when we get to the, the Grail Wood, first we have to go to Clearfell. Clearfell. In Clearfell, there is a boss and there's a chest. We want to get both those things. So, I'm going to be clearing the map more than I normally would in a game like this for the sake of those two objectives. Then, in this next area, there's two bosses. There's the Bramble Gas. And there's the Forgotten Witch. So these areas, every single area, probably I think they said every every area has a boss. Every area has a boss. So that's what I like to play this game for is the bosses, you know, the gear. So boom, we hop into Clearfell. We're looking for the witch, not the witch. I don't even remember what that, that boss was, but we're looking for them. Boom, there's the... Uh, Power charge, calling, or whatever. That's the power charge effect. If I hit him twice, even though it doesn't have an effect on him, I can still use um, killing palm and I'll get a power charge. If, if, it, if, killing, if killing palm uh, kills, then it'll get the power charge. That's just gonna basically bring me to the game, carry me to the game is my enhanced falling, uh, falling thunder. I like rolled in a circle basically. But as you can see, I basically got one hit by that ability from that caster. And that's just how this game is. Like, it's much harder. Charles are forcing themselves to play this game and blow through it like it's POE1. 
By the end of the day, that's what made PoE one boring. Just you could blow through it, and there was no finesse, there was no style. You just you just would spam your abilities and hope you didn't get killed in return, right? It was either them or you. And here's the stash. Here's the chest we were looking for. It gives us an uncut skill gem, a mana quest. I have received reports of a number of villagers hiding at the Clearfell logging site. Travel there and convey my order to return. Anyone refusing my authority should be considered a traitor and a criminal. Deal with them as you see fit, but bring their bodies back to the manor. This voice is the Act 1 protagonist, the Count. He's what started all these, all these problems. So we got another skill gem, Fish Cascade. Frozen Locus. Glacial Cascade can help us range. As you can see, it allows you to ascend. Attack that ends with a powerful freeze. spike of ice. Freeze. <laughs> Hitting a frozen target with the spike will do a large amount of damage. That's range. You know, that's like if we're fighting a boss and we can't really get to him. We hit him with a couple of these. That's just range and it's freeze. It's elemental freeze. I got some range right there. Sorry if I just like pause like that. We're like, I'm trying to figure out how to best play the game and not die in your style and get my power charges. I'm not some like degenerate meta gamer who. just blowing through the game, you know, like, I'm really enjoying it at a reasonable rate. Like, I'm not trying to blow through the game and be done with it. This is, like, a good source of, uh, entertainment and content. If you die, it resets the enemies in the area. So, like, this isn't a really, this isn't a very big area, but if I die, it'll reset all the enemies, and they are pretty tough. So right here we got an energy shield, which we want for 14 max life. Evasion's cool, but I haven't seen it really do much in this game, so we're not worried about evasion. We'll just sell these flasks, we'll sell this stuff. I think relying on gear for damage is going to be the thing to do. <laughs> for like we want to build <laughs> defenses like energy shield and stuff because we don't want to die we want to live we don't want to die so if it takes longer to, to kill enemies fine we just don't want to be dying over and over because we don't want to fight the enemies over and over again kill. now like I said with the waypoints you saw that there's a chest that we already got, and then there's um, Vera, whatever. It doesn't show you the um, the Devourer, but that's a boss you'll be fighting. He's underground in the Mud Barrow, so when you go underground, and you're able to find a waypoint underground, if there is one, you will see. Here, I'll go back out. It should work now. You you will see that it will show him. It'll show all the bosses, I'm saying. So here's the mud barrel. Right here. The devourer. So just a nice little tip. If you're running to the game, you're not really focusing. Just check your waypoint to see if you've missed anything important like a boss or a chest. This is a very small area. I'm pretty sure a lot of people would have seen footage of you in this case going to fight the devourer. Very small area. Basically changing um, how combat works. If you were in the field and you're able to encounter packs and mobs and deal with them how you want, now you really can. You have to deal with them popping out. Like you have trees popping out of the wall, slamming on the ground. Like that's a great design. See if 
just slammed down. You couldn't really see him. He's like mud. That's how. That's how you make an interesting area. You know, that's how you use the design up the map. The underground area, along with a very powerful, slow lumbering enemy to make a new area with different type of combat. It's like a, an egg indicator. It's like one of the treasure. It's like one of the secret treasure areas. You know I'm saying. If I run it down, of course, it'd be eggs. It's like an empty egg. Like a like a egg bird, you know, like a sarcophagus full of gold. It's not very. It's not really possible. They don't have the ability to just right-click items and equip them. So that's kind of annoying. I'm used to that. That's like. Just standard. You have the hatchery. The hatchery is where you'll find tons of egg sacs. That's like the treasure area. There are hidden treasure areas in dungeons like these that gets you a boost, you know, to your gold. I can see there's a couple egg sacs here. Wait. treasure areas as well as paying attention to your map I have no room for that. to get to go after the bosses and uh, you know you're gonna want to play the game the way they designed it to where there are hidden treasure things there are bosses and chests and stuff you want to hunt for them because if you kill the bosses you'll probably get some good drops and some XP and all that other nonsense. Inventory school, let's go back to town, sell it, strap it. So this is going to be a very almost slow methodical playthrough with slow methodical conversation that kind of powers, they power one another. Yeah. Boom, we're selling this, that. It's all garbage for the most part. A lot of interesting mechanics that I might would have I might have focused on if it weren't the, for the fact that I'm not playing those classes. There, I don't want to like spend every day all day making like a tutorial. But I think it's charming. Goodbye. You have to kind of make the decision: Do you really want to pick up every single piece of loot to make a buck? Sometimes you just want to play. You don't want to even worry about that. The big mistake I just was, I was making. I forgot that I was gonna play a warrior in tandem with the monk. It's like I'm not saving any of the items for the, the warrior. And that's what's gonna make playing the warrior and the monk so easy. You know, if I play the warrior past the monk, I can give the monk some items and vice versa. But I was talking about my strategy, you know, when I was kind of checking out checking out the content for Pee Wee One thinking like, I'm not really a POE one content creator, but some people are, and uh, they are different than people who do other things, because they succeed at POE one and they're similar, you know I'm saying they're very similar, so I realize these people are like, like robots, right, like they're not like some human power, and I was like, when you think about it, this game's very methodical, it's like an RPG. Being robots like like a like just like a Eureka type of thing. It's like I'm basically practicing in a robot. People might say, well, people didn't intend to do it, but that's what worked. That's like saying in the army people became like survival experts. You know, they were supposed to have rations and camps. Like that's like they're like a woodsman or something now, right? That's just how it is.
I'm probably am I probably am going to uh, IR. I am. I'm gonna probably spend these next three points to get to step like mist. And then I'll probably start building, you know, attack, damage, crits. I mean, I'm a very simple person. Like, I'm not insane. Or, like, I'm not going to build the starting... Especially, this is my first character. Like, I'm going to do the simplest thing there is. But, you know, we're building up tons of defense, basically. Especially because it's our first character. No staff to rely on. Like... Make a big difference going for defense. Maybe I can save this shield for my warrior when I switch to them, but who knows? Maybe me streaming will just give me the energy. To just, just play monk. I literally said back in the day I was gonna play monk. I was like, that might change, but it really didn't. spamming um bone thunder on devour and on stuff but it doesn't do that much damage as my basic attack. So the solution there would be to drop bone thunder until he's shocked. Then hit him because when they're shocked they take more damage. So it's like you gotta play a little bit smarter than what you might do in another game. You're just like hitting your ability. Be cognitive, cognizant <laughs> of your health bar, on your man on the amount of health, uh, the amount of health charges you have in your blast. If you don't want to use more up and die in a boss fight, so you're like, uh, them. This is why I built into my energy shield. Now I'm not really struggling. So boom, here's no my first example of like, save these items for your warrior. I got a smithing hammer, I have a shield, a helmet with armor on it, so that's like, you know, 11 armor, 29 health, that's definitely more of a, uh, a thing to give to my warrior. I can give him the shield, this hammer, if I want, stun duration, all that good stuff. So we got a skill gem, upgrade a magic item to a rare item. But you see, there's these level 3 skills. There are no level 2 skills. There are no level 4 skills. So you can upgrade your skills to a level 2 skill, or you can unlock a skill and take it straight to level 2. I'm not going to get Frozen Locust. Frozen Locust will explode. I'm just going to upgrade Falling Thunder. And as far as taking a magical item to a rare item, I'll probably upgrade my chest piece. Just giving me a... Um, str 
strength, which is kind of unnecessary. But that eight strength, thirteen maximum life, twenty-five armor. I can give that to my warrior if I do want to switch. My warrior, if I do switch to it. Yeah. It's like you're seeing. You're gonna see how one character is gonna make it easy for another character because you do share gold. You share gold between characters. It's gonna make it easy for your other characters to make leaps and bounds and allow them to dominate the game when normally they couldn't. Yes. So we defeated the uh, the boss. That was a quest thing. It I wasn't a story point. It was just some random monster in a, a cave. Ah, oh, finally! Took down the Devourer, did you? Oh, that's incredible! This is the first real success we've had against the darkness. We can breathe a bit easier now. Perhaps even go out and gather food. We help them greatly by doing that. We need to support gem. Support gems used to modify skill gems. Cold infusion, martial tempo, overpower, killing palm, life drain. You know, just I'm not gonna give you the whole shabuzel, be beasel, boozel. Perpetual charge, this is what you really would want. It makes it to where you have a chance not to spend a charge. And you have to be very strategic with this because you don't want to get stuck with no power, right? Like you don't want to get hamstrung by whatever. Like I even I even kind of wasted that upgrade to a rare to a rare by getting only strength out of the upgrade. So it's like, I could really hamstring myself with like a string of those type of things and then I'll be stuck grinding for levels and stuff to get stronger or respecking. So now that we leveled up, we're a little bit stronger. We could go and face Rhea, Brea, whatever. Right there you see I didn't spend a power charge, so I can immediately with him. That this just makes the biggest difference. The speed. I'm not constantly pushing for a charge. No mana. So I'm doing pretty well health-wise because I'm just building defense. A good question is, is this game easy? To me, PoE 1 became easy and then hard, but because there was a slight amount of Upgrade to make, to make it easy. Like, once it became easy, it basically was easy. It was very old, so like, just, just so old that was really. A lot of difficulty came from is trying to deal with the controls. To me, this is. I wouldn't say this is hard, I'd say it's punishing. Right? power charges that made a big boost now with perpetual charge it makes it to where like I'm basically gone because I'm never gonna really even have to fight people that long I just straight up drop killing or falling thunder on them but I could have just went oh I want to do an ice build glacial cascade frozen locust and then never have that synergy you know like Looking for the boss. If you look at my map, there's like uh, an area I went, I completely missed the middle of it. The boss was at, like, I just went all the way around. If you have a boss here in this area. Every area has a boss, and they can drop you some goodies.
damage drop, but well, if you drop the green item, grants 10% cold resistance. That's permanent. If you're going and fighting the boss, you get things like this. Head of the Winter Wolf. That's a permanent 10% cold resistance. Making it a, a great item, especially if I run into an enemy later on. That gives me trouble. That does cold damage. Here's another... Uh, you know, it's both the best. It's, you know, I don't know what 76 invasion is going to do. But let's see. We are a monk. Is there a way to, like, display damage numbers? To the clock. I guess because I'm on Steam, I don't have to log in. I just kind of got that. <laughs> I don't have to log in. actually no like damage numbers and all that so as far as evasion goes that's what i was looking for to see if i'm gonna build this evasion up when do i evade i'm saying i'm sure other i'm sure i do evade though so boom that was that whole area we went off into the mud barrel we had the boss and that's just how it is like you know you even have the little sum of the boss grayed out that's just the first area i'm saying that's kind of the tone of the game where, you know, you really do want to overcome the challenges of the bosses to get an advantage, I'm saying. I have dreamt of this place as of late. I am called forward. I could have swear like had a map fits right there, I guess. Right there. Any health charges because I just equipped it. I can see this area has wolves in it. I run quickly. I charge you basically. It's like, had I not built defensively, had I just went offense to blow through that last area, I'd be dealing with wolves in this area. But then, you know, if I don't have defense, I get the area that's full of like slow enemy or offense like I'm doing, I'm saying. You have to build. Hags, you know, kind of boarding over these imps, which is wolves, leading the charge.
go. This is the other boss location. Found the witch, but tons of enemies up here. Say by the bell. So we're two points away from Step Like Mist. I think I'm just going to stay dedicated like how I was and just keep building defense. Because I think, I think right now I can buy a better weapon. I think that's a great, that's like a big part of the uh, PoE2 build. It's a good thing, like if you want to keep your head right, you really do want to stay dedicated. Like, okay, I'm going to spend these levels getting to here or to there. Alright. It's like once I spend these, what, five levels? I'm gonna spend these five levels. And then I'll probably build lightning, you know what I'm saying? That's like dedicate it, like five, and then what? Seven. I'll put these boots on my warrior. I already have like a little warrior set, you know, starts to be lower level, to be, to be feeding, yes. to be fed. If I can look at the sale Please. price of these items, Take 10 gold, 14, so I'm going to be kind of worthless and I can just get some scrap material out of it. I will treasure it. Sell these items. I have about 400 gold. Mm. My weapon. How is the kick I can know? This is a thousand four hundred, but it's a yellow, so it's probably my only option right now. So I really can't buy a weapon. I can buy these gloves, it gives me two to three fire damage. I think that's worth it. I will keep you alive. To the cairns. Have we met? Ah, no, we haven't. Hard to tell monks apart. You lot let me stay in your enclave one winter. I was, uh, unfairly asked to leave under suspicion of thievery. Wasn't me, though. I'm well known as an honorable man around here. Ask anybody. The name's Finn, and I shall be your humble provider of useful and diverse objects that are most definitely not scrounged or stolen. If I don't got it, I can get it. You just let me know. Take a pun. This guy sells you, you know items. You want to. Based off like a gamble system, if you want to get a random item, you can. So a random quarter staff could be great, but I don't have the cash for it. Not surprised to see a thief in a place like this. Yeah, we gotta fight the boss. I've just been building straight defense, so fighting the boss is easily What foulness dwells here? Much trouble. 
a quarter staff. Anyway, with two to six fire damage on it, plus level one, or plus one level to all melee skills. Perfect. And some more weapons, possibly, potentially for my um, whatever his name is, warrior. Another um, another uh, sword gem. I'm gonna grab. Attack speed for my basic attack. This isn't so bad. I thought it was going to be like kind of a win. But I'm chilling. Now, like, the important question is is this a Diablo trailer? Like, I think Diablo offers a different experience. I think this is like a campaign experience, much more closed end story. Diablo really isn't like that, it's like open world. I would say this is like more of an older design, a campaign. It's like, it'd be more appropriate for this game to have come first, and then say with Diablo being open world. And offering the, st the seasons and the style it does, is it better than this? Right? I guess is a better way to phrase it. I think so, I'm saying. But is Diablo better because open world? I think it is. I think the open world, eventually, people are going to be like, yeah, you're right, like the open world, skip campaign, this kind of love, you know what I'm saying. Shock. There's no campaign skip feature in this. Maybe there will be. I don't know. It's up to them, really. If they want to add that. If they do, then it's going to be like... It isn't going to be comparable, in my opinion. For Diablo, this will be better. But I think without Diablo, you know, like, the RPG genre couldn't really evolve at the rate it, it can evolve at now. Without POE and Diablo need them because they push the envelope. Here goes the other boss. This tree boss. Killing palm. You can see I have that point for my staff and all my skills. Making them a little bit better. Because they were a little I think the boss fights you before are very boring. Like they're just like you either smash him or you struggle to survive, and it's not even fun. Feel the shock! Like you either just melt them or you don't. Game, the bosses are way better, like they're fun to fight. Especially considering how varied they are and how unique they are with Diablo 4, they're all the same boss. You fight like the blood bishop where you fight like a giant like demon that like jumps in the air. Or you fight like a giant spider or something like Diablo's is from the very beginning very on inspired boss design, you know what I'm saying? It definitely has good boss mechanics, but once you've played the game for so long, it's like, it's not that, it's not that deep, you know what I'm saying? Usually I'd have the urge to switch classes, but I really don't. 
So that's the power of streaming, where like, usually I'd be playing Warrior by now, but I'm not even playing it. I'm already like level 5. It's very impressive. I probably will play Warrior tomorrow though, if I don't fix it. That'll be the first thing I do. This is all story stuff. What Pay attention. Here? This shade. Is it still alive? Perhaps it can give us the answers we seek. Only the Count's sword has the power to bind souls to the tree like this. To release that being from the tree of souls will need more than simply cutting his rope. The ancient runes that imbue the Count's blade created the binding. And only ancient runes can break it. There is a battlefield not far from here that runs red with rust, where the weapons and armor of countless Ezemites still remain. We call it the Red Veil. You should search the area. There may still be power in some of those centuries-old relics. When you... I'll wait here. The last the part was saying that a friendly can repair it. Did you visit something. the Veil? There is a bat when you will know how to forge them. Bring the runes to him. And then, perhaps, we shall find some answers. So the count went out into the forest, the, the forest rat right now, me. I assume. Found something that drove him mad, and, you know, probably the source of all these zombies. And now we have this next story point. Let's see what By he says. By decree of the Count of Ogham, those condemned to hang from these branches are to be left until their hearts no longer beat. Their lungs no longer fill with air, and their flesh is no longer warm. In death, you are not forgiven. Your souls will remain trapped here by this ancient moor of maligned wood, and the grove will be forever denied you. Rot here in the Grellwood for all time, and good riddance. As you can see, we we got all these chests and uh, bosses. The one's got red veil. That's the rest king in it. Check out the little water mill, whatever that is, is turning on the map. That's pretty cool. my two settlers mystery boxes it's not supported in this game stash tabs armor so they're already selling stuff they have some cosmetics there's footprint effects Since I got the game, uh, I think I have points, right? I think on the website. I, think I should be good, right? Didn't say I have any points.
Those are death effects on, um, These are death effects on like rare enemies. Okay. Yeah, like these are dope. I don't have any cash. Like I'm kind of missing. I mean, I should. I should have 200 points. I don't have any points. I guess I can go like on the website and look at them. down anyway I have to come back how much are points can I get like points for like five dollars or something I guess it's not really working right now anyway I guess because the website's down that you can't buy like stuff I don't even know how that works but I do have a I have two support packs or two seller packs. I realize there's like a there's like some shining ball on the on the mana. I don't know what that is. It's always there, which is really annoying. I just realized that it's always there. That's gonna mess with me. I shouldn't have said anything. I could have just been quiet. buy stash tabs with money, which is kind of cheap. I'm not gonna talk about it, like it's not a big deal, but I don't I don't like that type of stuff. Just let us buy it with like in-game currency. Yes, Finn makes fun of my collection, but it's beautiful. Hmm. How can I help? Take a look. to the cards. I started reading Batman comics. This is like the first period of reading Batman comics. Well, I've only read DC or Marvel comics in like large volumes to where like to me there is a distinct difference between the two. I would say like DC Comics a lot more bare bone, and uh, they expect you to have like a more mature perspective, I guess. I think DC Comics did better though. Like they've ate, it's it's aged like wine. Where Marvel Comics kind of aged like cheese. It's like kind of sticky. Or like the newer Marvel Comics are great, but like there's such a disparity gap between newer ones and old ones. I would say what Marvel Comics DC comics have in common is like the newer comics. Like they seem very similar to where like it's a lot more like modern, modernized writing style and like kind of in your face with like the politics. And it's also like almost like getting slapped in the face with like 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 high pitched voice screaming and stuff. Where it's not that old or deep, but I mean it still is kind of with DC. It still is pretty deep, like some comics are pretty deep, like depends what story arc it is. So reading these Batman comics, and from reading Batman comics, you're know, reading like Justice League comics and stuff. I definitely can say that, you know, arguing one or the other is not in the favor of DC because just from Batman comics, like it's a little bit more mature. It's not like you can milk dopamine and all this out of the experience like you're reading it it's like a detective like Batman's a detective like at, while, while you're reading it you're trying to figure out what's who's who what's going on you know what I'm saying and like it could be very that, that's why I said it ages like wine like it can be very confusing but in reality it's actually very well done 
Very impressive. I read the long Halloween. I read Hush. Then I read Justice League, New World Order. And it's like, there's so many comics, so many storylines I can read. And I like, especially somebody who's making content, trying to find a, a spot to come from. Like, it's a great thing to read and see. Like, to me, Marvel's like, supercharged you know it's all over the place it's it's wacky it's zany there are storylines that are deep but a lot of times it's better just to take the wacky and zany i think that's where marvel's falls short is it's having the blow with kazoo like if it, if it doesn't land like okay this wasn't even that great like a lot of times spider-man to me is just blow the kazoo you know don't even worry about it being deep blow the kazoo but like Batman's like you don't really blow the kazoo you just you can actually enjoy the writing and all that Marvel writing to be back in the day was kind of goofy it was almost like Englishmen speak it was like old English very different but like Marvel to me is, is always like blow the kazoo I still like Marvel I like Marvel more because there's more characters to like there's more comics to like you can't really take DC that seriously like you can't it's like it's just it's just that same almost like monotone style of writing for all the heroes and doesn't even really fit the character I guess You have a way to protect my Batman to where it's a lot more grounded. And like Batman doesn't do that. I, like I'd say he'll be like, he'll be like this, the biggest Batman nerd for like. I think Batman's always like gliding around and like chest kicking people. Like he doesn't even do that. A lot of time it's just like detective work. I'm saying, or like him monologuing and having problems or something. Like, that. Just like backstory. He's not, it's not like Arkham Asylum or Arkham City where you just beat people up. It's just not the case. So here we go. We got stuff like Mist. Now we're going to start building up damage. one day, I don't know. I recommend if you're looking to be surprised or you need the gaps to be filled, you have the Batman comics. If you want something that you haven't you can't anticipate, definitely Three Batman comics can uh, be great. Long Halloween, you know, there's all the Court of Owls, that's like a good one. Just great storylines. You're not really relying on Batman, like, having this inner power like Spider Man or Wolverine, where he's just like the god. Alright. A lot of time, DC, it's not about the characters having this power block. It's like, it's not like what you're saying. It's like a power block, like the whole it's like a power block. Like that tree is like a king of power block, so he's always Then like the telepaths and Marvel are like nosebleeds and stuff. Really realize that I'm hitting power. Usually, these seems like they put the pieces together and that's how they win. 
I'm not saying DC isn't cheesy, like, like the Superman, you know, the Flash, like, I'm not saying it isn't. That's why I said, like, DC's more bare bones. Like, Marvel definitely has the advantage. There are so many likable, interesting characters. But it's just too much kazoo blowing. It's just too, too, too meme level. Characters letting their lives to the ground, or they're like doing some apocalyptic future with an iPad, like helping someone save the world or something. Like that. It's it can be very interesting, but it can also be very like meme level blow the horn, right? It's like, oh, well, now I'm marrying so and so, so I didn't really hit blow the horn. I think that's. Definitely a, a vital, a big flaw for writers to where maybe they're just too immature or something across the board. Like, if you ask me if I had to be reading Marvel comics or DC comics, I'd probably say Marvel. I've already read Marvel comics. Thousands of them, I'm mean, saying. Thousands of them. So it's like, I need something different, different tone, you know, different. Universe. Oh, just gets me too over the top. You're mine. You had the um, the the Marvel storyline. We're like, well, the world ends all the time in Marvel. Like, you, I'm, I'm surprised that there even is a world. It's almost like Asgard, where the world's always ending. You had like the one where there was like conversion or whatever, where the planets were crashing into each other, but they were like Earths, like, alternate Earths. Like that was a lot, right? And then you had like the Venom thing where it was like all about Venom and Carnage and Noel. Like that was a lot, but like that was really interesting. That was really, really interesting. But then afterwards, you know, the King of Black, like after that storyline, it's like, it couldn't hold interest because it was just too meme level. It was kazoo. It was just like they ran their lives to the ground. Now's the clear. Here's what I've got. Meaning, like, I'll find some use for that. It's just, it's like, it's like nosedive city. I'm saying. I'll find some use for that. Well, right now next. I'm just like selling things. I shouldn't be selling, but I'm kind of sleepy, so I'm not the most focused I could be. We have a long quarter, quarter staff, an upgrade from uh, the warped one. The base ones are warped. We have these long ones. Giving you increased range as well. That's 21 damage. This one. I think this one's still better because <gasps> plus one all our melee skills kind of. A little bit better, but you know we are we are on lookout for long quarter staffs now. If you find a point out there, do bring it back. I'm surprised the website's down. I should have points already associate with my account. Yeah, I should I should be good to where in a day or two I should be able to catch the sale. I do want to drop a little bit more cash and maybe get the nightfall armor looks really cool it's like a $30 armor set though but like when you when you buy the um when you get a supporter pack you get 300 points which is $30 with the points so like it could be worth buying something insane like this while the offer is on the table Do some really nice wings. I might buy these wings. Who knows? Very expensive, though. You can definitely see spending like hundreds of dollars on this. But instead of spending money on the, the points, or the, you know, yeah, the points, 
I'm better off buying the supporter packs for the game. That will come with points. I'm saying. Like, it's only a one-to-one. -one. If you're going to buy these points, you might as well buy the supporter pack. I'm sure someone's going to say, I just want to support the game, and I'm going to buy the $500 supporter pack, then spend another $500 on cosmetics. Like, do whatever you want, buddy. I, I don't really care. I'm not here to, like, pull me in Like, I think Spider-Man comics have a lot of potential, but a lot of times, like, insufferable memeing. Like, Spider-Man's kind of a dick, I'm saying. Not even, like, the people just... If we're just sitting in silence, he's, like, he's kind of a dick. Right? It's like... It's like a, a, a mean-ass zoo animal. Like, sitting in silence with Batman is almost the most interesting part about... That. That's how the characters are maintained. That's how the characters are treated. There's the obelisk. Like the Marvel reminds you of like the trashiest part of society, like living in like Manhattan. Like art the, the punishers are killing people outside your apartment. But like DC kind of draws you to more of a grander, more like Idealistic society, I guess, but like a golden age almost, right? Evasion does play a big role. Yeah, evasion is actually pretty useful. I'm actually evading a lot of these hits. Usually games have damage numbers and hit numbers and stuff, but this game doesn't, apparently, which you think it would.
Here we go, level 3 skill gem. That's going to allow us to grab level 3 skill. We have Staggering Calm. Tempest Bell. Vaulting Impact. Vaulting Impact is an effective tool for closing in on enemies and... Te We're going to go Tempest Bell. Start punching stuff. Boom, we have this quilted vest. And slap some, uh, we turn to a rare and have a socket on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Period. I would have. to break what binds. I'm looking to grab another magic. Fine job forging those. Magic attunement, whatever. So I could, um, I will treasure it. Add one more magical magic eight ethics. I think I could add one more. I think two's the max. So I'll just probably turn this closet one in. I probably should save this regal orb. Mm. I'll be fine. That's what I have currently. Yes. This Tempest Bell is definitely class monk skill. But in this game it's a lot more grounded and a lot cooler because of it. In Diablo 3 you have like that monk bell. It was really cool. There's the obelisk. Time to discover what truly happened out here. He's unconscious, but he's breathing. Though, this wound. We should take him back to Clearfell. He may be the only one who knows what truly happened out here. Stay safe if you can. The wound. It should be fatal, but somehow he clings to life. I fear it will not be long until his song ends. He will never heal while the Count's binding still holds sway. Only by a Count's hand can this binding be released. I know an old tale, one that speaks of a ring we might be able to recover, buried three centuries ago in our ancient graveyard. A Count's signet ring, bearing his rune of authority, but how to reach it in time? The grim tangle, the overgrown sinkholes and gullies that run beneath Ogham can lead you there. The path is dangerous, but go back to the Grellwood. Find the entrance. 
We shall see. Finn makes fun of my collection, but I think it's cute. I heard you're heading for the village. When I fled for my life, there was no time for me to grab all my smithing tools. If you do manage to reach my forge, you should find them and bring them here. I'll set up a bench and we can see about working on your equipment. What would you like? See, this is a yellow, like a rare staff. It's, it's not that great for a monk. Accuracy rating, not really important. Um, six X thirty, it's like standard. Two life per enemy hit, that could be good. Stun build up, like it's not, it's only, you know, usually you want like a damage boost to it, but I mean, it's fine. The, the two damage per enemy hit is probably really good. This thorns is great, like, it's really good. Especially if you have evasion, like, you're gonna be doing something always, dodging or thorning with thorns. Wait, how did I access that map? There's no way, how do you access that map? Okay, if you press U, you can access the overworld map. This is Act 1. You can see you have the castle. That would be like the climax. This is like the wooded, you know, the, the lumberyard. You know, the red veil. You know, the forest. The village. This is like the cemetery. It's great. All there for you. As people in the uh, chat are kind of memeing around, it's very, um, very meta, you know what I'm saying? And people aren't really immersed in the experience as much as they are immersed in, like, the popular culture, you know what I'm saying? It's like wearing, like, a dad hat and, like, a crew neck with, like, shorts in the winter or something, it's like, you're not even going to enjoy the winter because the crew neck, you really get your hands dirty, I'm saying, like, dad hat, like, you're not going to get your hands dirty. Triple XD, LOL, like, like, builds, like, you can't really enjoy it, that, you can't enjoy the experience. I think the biggest people are, like, you would say, like, oh, this girl, she, like, doesn't even know what this is, but it's, like, I think the people who enjoy the experience at least probably, like, Probably like people who play games. Like, he doesn't even enjoy the game. Like he's not immersed. He's just like he's like talking in the, during the movie. Like it's really kind of like you just you just kind of give up on that. Like uh, like I'm not gonna try to force somebody who just wants to LOL and talk to their buddies to enjoy things. that I have my bell equipped. My bell just gonna have a bell on the end of my staff. Very great detail. Very nice. I like it. It's like an identical bell too. It's identical. I won't be getting through here. If the Fae spirits are still watching, I believe they will help us. Please, wait a moment. Magic still thrives. The way is open. Please hurry. I don't know who this lady is, but she has all types of abilities and knowledge. How strange.
died because I was trying to try out the bell and get close. Alright guys, I think I gotta go. It's pretty late. I've probably only been shooting for two hours, but I did start shooting at midnight. Oh, I have an hour and a half. So like, I, sh I, was, I was up since early this morning. I took a nap when I got back. There was server problems. First day release. I had kind of thought I wouldn't be able to stream the game and sit still and focus, but I actually can. So it's like, it's kind of a godsend. A great thing. A blessing, if you will, for someone like me. But I'm going to bounce up out of here, and tomorrow I probably will start my warrior. Seven, like that's pretty good. From from nothing, no stash, just play the monk. Look a little like even in the menu, look a little like pose effects. When his belt's tighter than like his zipper and belt and all that, like it's tighter than all all hell. But his little like waist area, like it's fluttering. His hair is it's like it's flying around. I'm really glad they gave the monk hair, a lot of it. You know, rather than being bald, I think that was a good a good choice. It makes him seem more like a person, like a like a like a character. Take up the standard hardcore. I am going to create. Foundling, it is a pity to see you like this. You arrived on our shores a whipped and broken child. Our people made you strong. How were they repaid? Sedition and lies. I'm going to create a name now because I'm kind Speak of now if you choose. already in the mode. Hero. Hero, I guess, bro. <laughs> I'm just gonna break the terrible here and look at them. I do have items in the stash. I'll probably start this tomorrow, whenever I, you know, basically tomorrow. Maybe you see cool, but... I'll you know, see you guys later. I wish I could have streamed longer, but... Why is all this dust here? All these, like, scars on him. You know he's a tank. He has, like, a symbol. He really has the warrior symbol on his back. It's like a scar, though. Baller. Hidden Easter egg. Um, I'm gonna get out of here. I'll see you guys later. Be sure to check out other people's Twitch streams for PoE2 because there are there are Twitch drops, allowing you to get in game get in game items. And if you don't own the game yet, you can at least get the items. Maybe you can make an account. I'm pretty sure it'll work. But you know, I'm gonna get up out of here.